Hey, what's going on? Today I want to talk about musical minimalism. And by musical minimalism, I don't mean having a minimalist studio setup. And by musical minimalism, I don't mean selling all of your gear. When I'm talking about musical minimalism, I am talking about a technique that you can use that helps you eliminate all of the infinite options that we have available to us as music producers and to use this technique to help expedite completing and finishing tracks. We'll explore some more music minimalism concepts in the future, but today we're going to focus on something that I am calling note minimalism. And it was an idea that was inspired from the Nordrum, with the Nordrum only having six pads. And I thought about creating a track only using the Nordrum. The Nordrum is essentially six mono synths, so you have an ability to detune a second oscillator for each of the six pads. So technically you'd have 12 notes available to you and I probably won't go all the way up to that. The goal of this is to create majority of the structure of this song with just the six pads that are available to me. And then we'll supplement it with, you know, drums, drum loops and effects, maybe percussion and things like that. But the most of this track is going to be from just the six pads that are available to me. I'm gonna go ahead and take it over to the Nord Drum and we'll start trying to develop some patches and then we'll take it to Ableton and see if we can turn it into a full song. Okay. Hi. Okay. So I have some patches that I started developing here. Take a listen, this is what we have. This is gonna be the foundation for the track. If you see as I cycle through these, the second parameter or the left parameter, the top parameter, changes for some of these pads. Nothing there, something there, nothing there, something there. Same for this. Same waveform, but we are just using a different pitch for these. And then this one down here, what I've done is I have a second oscillator and I have it detuned. And so this is what it would sound like without it. And so for these first, like, I guess 10, until you get like in the mid 60s here, it's a sort of like a detune. Then you can hear that it's starting to jump up by, by note. And we were up at 87. So 85 here is an octave higher and then 12 notes higher. 87 is uh, two octaves higher. No spectra there, no spectra there and then uh, two octaves higher. For these high-end ones, all we have is just a little bit of detuning for each. So here's without. Now I tend to like um, them going a little bit further, like I like the way that that sounds, but I think that too much of that, it can sort of get in the way of what you're trying to create. Um, and to maybe do it tastefully, it's so like maybe only do it with one. Here's a little riff that I started coming up with. So already right there, if I decided to go with that, we've got part one of a song. So it could be the intro or the verse. And then I came up with the second part here. So that could technically be the hook. So already you can see that we're forming a song that has these changes and it takes you to a different place, but we're just using six notes. Technically speaking, we've got seven notes if you count this octave here. Pretty cool. I have a, a third part that maybe might be sort of like a breakdown or just an alternate part for this song, which would be... Oh, <laughs> let me try that again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record a performance. We'll get all the MIDI into Ableton, and then we'll see if we can start to flesh this out and turn it into a song or a track. So I recorded a performance here, and I printed my MIDI to audio. This is what we have, this is what it sounds like. The low end on the left and the high end on the right. And the high end. And then together. 
then this part as well. And then what I've done is I supplemented all of the low end notes with a kick drum. So I just used this MIDI data that I had from the initial performance. All together with everything. I went to my drum loops that I've been creating with my iPad using Core Gadget, and this is what this sounds like. I had another drum sample that I thought sounded really good in here. I'm gonna duplicate that across. I'm gonna just see if this works for that. So right there, I'm gonna do a Command Shift M. There we go, hats. Maybe we'll do something like, like that, just giving some variety. Run this all the way across. Uh, we'll switch the grid and... I love that, duplicate that across, duplicate. For the low end, I'm going to add Ableton's drum bus, um, just to give this a little bit more punch with the low end. And you know what, as I'm looking at the waveform, I noticed that I must have recorded this in a little bit more quiet. So I'm going to just boost the gain a little bit. In one of my previous videos, I talked about how I have sends here and I like to feed these different tracks into these sends. Nostalgia, which is a tape echo. I have just a basic sort of delay here and then drive and then a big giant reverb. The thing that I'm gonna be using primarily is this drive. Um, I'll give you an idea what this sounds like here. And then I'm just gonna go crazy with it because this is like pretty much what I use mostly. I'm gonna select this send here. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna use insert shape and I'm just gonna ramp up into this send. Cool. I sort of did like a, a drum fill here and I'm going to take out the hi-hat loop for this. So we've got like there. So we've got another 808. <laughs> We're going to duplicate that. I like that a lot. Um, there's sort of like an accent that's happening because there's a duplicate of the hi-hats um, and I think that that sounds really neat. I'm going to cheat here because I know that I gave myself six notes, but I'm going to add the cowbell, I think, somewhere. There we go. I'm gonna go with the czar one because it just sounds great. Like Duplicate that across. All right, so on the low end here, I'm gonna use this trick. I'm calling it electricity until I come up with a better name for it. Milliseconds, and we're just gonna bring it to something very, very short. I'm gonna turn the feedback up a little bit, and then we're gonna look and see if we can find another tone or another pitch in here. So you see if we move this in like very, very small increments, then we're gonna get sort of different notes. You're gonna hear a pitch shifting. I'm gonna turn the sync off for both of these. I'm gonna move this just a, like slightly higher and then I'm gonna automate this dry wet. We'll just do it maybe twice and then not get carried away with it. We can take this SAR1 reverb and we'll do the same thing with the dry wet. While that reverb is going, I'm going to take that tail and then run it into the send or the drive send that I have so that we can distort and drive the reverb sound. Great, okay, so I'm gonna keep on messing around the same process. I'm just digging around and finding sounds that I think that sound cool. All I'm doing is I'm feeding these sounds into different sends and primarily what I'm gonna be using is drive I'm gonna be using reverb. I'm gonna be using that delay trick that I just showed you and hopefully make this a little bit more dynamic. And to exemplify that it can be just six notes. Um, it doesn't have to be all that. I'm gonna just go ahead and, and keep playing with this and then I'll show you what it sounds like. Um, have a good week, bye.